Hey guys, today we're going to talk about using pre-commit hooks to automatically run tests and automatically lint your Python code. In this context, I'm doing this in my Django project, but you could really do this for any Python project. So the first thing to be aware of is inside the GitHub folder, actually it's the Git folder. Inside the Git folder, there's already um, like a, a subfolder that's called hooks and it contains a bunch of different uh, sample hooks and what you won't see is this pre-commit one what you'll see is a pre-commit sample but we're going to use a python package called pre-commit that will actually create this file here for us so the first thing you want to do is you want to pip install pre-commit. Now I've already installed it so it doesn't really matter to me but once you finish you should see it in here so we'll go to oop to do do to do pre-commit so you should have pre-commit and then after you've um, installed it you let's just start by creating a file that will actually run our tests and for that, inside your root directory, I created a folder, or I created a file called run tests, and this is a shell script. And it basically, let's make this a little bit smaller. I am running Python, so this whole command is saying run this Python. I have it in a virtual environment, but basically you want to this will be the path to your Python. And then I'm running a module, and the module I'm running is PyTest. So in my example, I'm using PyTest, so you want to make sure that's installed and configured. And then once we run PyTest, it needs to know where the tests are. In my project, I have them in a folder called Django project slash test. So if I go in here and we look at tests, we have my, you know, I'm testing my forms, my models, my views, everything. So what will basically happen is the pre-commit hook will run this shell script every time I attempt to commit to source control. So now that we've created that, why don't we go ahead and create that pre-commit file. And the way we do that is um, we do, oh, you know, I did forget a step. What we want to make sure we do is inside this folder where the run tests are, We'll want to make sure we make that file executable, run tests.sh. So I've already run this, but um, this will basically, this command, this chmod command, will make sure that the pre commit hook has the ability to execute the run test.sh file. Okay, so you'll make it executable, and then finally we can do the pre-commit install and once you hit enter it will say a bunch of things like successfully installed and if you check inside the um, git folder you will see this hooks and it will create this pre-commit right here and it'll say where is the python it'll it'll know where that is and then it's going to look for this pre-commit.config um, yaml file and this is what we'll need to create in our root directory in order to instruct and this will basically be where the pre-commit hooks will get its instructions from so let's close this up so now that we've done um, pre-commit um, uh, let's see, pre-commit install, we've created our hook. And now what we wanna do is create a pre-commit config YAML file. And I, I'll include this in the description, but this is where we're going to configure um, what's going to be run when we wanna make a commit. So before I go into this, we'll also just wanna make sure that we are linting, and in this case, I'm using a linting package called Flake 8. So that's just a, like a pip install Flake 8. Once you install, do like a pip list to make sure it's installed. 
And the way Flake 8 works is I have all my files under Django project. So if I just run Flake 8 um, Django project, it, it actually lented and there were no errors. If there were errors, you would see something um, happen. All right, now I'm not gonna go into this in great detail, but the idea is that we have two different hooks here. So the first hook is our flake eight one, and then our second hook is running tests. So this one, it it's saying we're running flake eight, and then it's wondering, okay, how do I configure flake eight? So I actually have a file in my root directory called um, period flake eight, and this um, kind of instructs the linting tool, hey, um, what should you ignore? I think this is ignoring um, line too long, and I just find that annoying. Like, I do try to make sure that my lines don't go crazy across the screen, but in certain cases it just makes sense and I think it's more readable. So I've turned off a couple linting rules, and this is completely up to you of what rules you want to ignore. And then in this exclude block here, we're saying, okay, you definitely don't want to lint like the Python files that are in your virtual environment. That's not your code. It's just going to throw a bunch of errors that you don't really care about. And then also, I don't necessarily care about my migrations that are automatically created. This is in the context of a Django project, and Django, Django projects typically have migrations. I don't necessarily care if they're not linted correctly. Um, they're not actually run in production. And then the final one I'm not linting is this apps.py, and that's a configuration file used by Django that I've um, found um, isn't my code again, and it will sometimes throw errors. I didn't want to change this code, so I ignored it. Um, but in, in, in any case, you add all the different files or folders you want to exclude, and then this way when the pre-commit hook runs, it will respect whatever configurations you've set inside your Flake 8 configuration file. And that's where it's saying, hey, I'm going to look for a point or a, a period Flake 8 configuration file in the root directory, and when I find it, I'm going to use it to instruct me on how to use Flake 8 during the pre-commit hook. Now the second one is where we're running the tests, and it's going to try to run our run test.sh, and it's saying let's do this in the um, commit stage. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. This should just work out of the box. I want to go through a couple examples to really solidify that this is working. First thing we'll do, let's just go into our test views file and in between these we can remove a space and then there will be an error like expected um, a blank line found zero there should be at least one blank line between functions and it's showing it's uh, flake AE 301 and just in the command line if we do so this file is under Django project so if we just do flake 8 Django project it's going to say yep I see the um, the one error that you need to change that blank line if I go in here and let's um, check out what we've got here to commit. Oops. Um, this one, let me undo this. Restore. Okay. So this is our one line change where we've removed that space. And my prediction is that if I try to commit this file, my pre commit hook is going to check it. So I'm going to do like add. Um, file with linting issue. If I hit commit, let's see if it works. It's thinking about it. What it might be doing in addition to running um, the linting is I think it's also running my tests. So it might actually go through it. Okay, we finally got it. So it says get warning, unexpected key present. Um, and it's saying like there's something issue. So let's look at the git log. And yep, yeah, here we go. So here's the, the error we're getting. Expected one blink line found zero and it failed. So it won't even, um, it won't do it. Uh, great. 
and that's the whole idea here. We want to be able to prevent bad commits from reaching source control. So I'm going to um, undo this. Um, well, actually, I'll keep it in for now, and I want to show another way to just test that everything's working. So we've already done, you know, the Flake 8 for the Django project, and this is, oops, Flake 8. And this is making sure that it's linting um, just using the command line version of Flake 8. But let's also, there's another command called um, pre-commit, and this is accessing the pre-commit package, and we can do run dash dash all files. And what this will do is this will be running what what Visual Studio Code is doing when it tries to do a commit, but you're basically able to do um, the testing and you're able to like check the configurations and, and actually run what the pre-commit hook would do if you were to make a commit. So I, I really like this command of uh, pre-commit run because it allows me to test things out without having to like go through the whole commit workflow to see if it's working. And you can see that it did show that it's failed and it's actually still running the test so it's not set up so that once it fails it stops completely. It kind of fails and then also runs the test. Um, I'm just gonna probably let it run and do its thing. But in any case, um, that's um, still failed. So now let's undo this, discard changes, and I'll just cancel this out for now. Okay, so now that we know that the linting is being blocked, let's also make sure that the tests are also being checked. So inside this, uh, we'll go to like test URLs, and this is making sure the all posts URL is being resolved. Let's just name this apples. I don't have a URL called apples, so this should fail. And let's try to run that. And uh, yes, it fails because that's not a real URL. And if I do, um, if you want to run PyTest, I believe we would go into here. Let's check out our run test. So basically what it's doing is it's accessing Python and then running PyTest. In my case, I've already activated the virtual environment. So I could just do Python 3-M PyTest and then choose Django project and tests. And now it's, it's running my tests. There's gonna be one failure inside test URLs. So it's, it's failed. Um, I'm just going to cancel that for now because we've, we see that it's failing, but let's actually check to make sure that it will block this failing test. So we'll add, um, add failing test, do, do, do. and now it's going through, it's linting the files, and it's running the test, and eventually it will figure out that the test is failing, and then it will prevent the commit from being committed to source control. Yep, and here we have um, what's kind of unfortunate is when you see this first error, it just like gives you this error and it, you have no idea what's going wrong. But if you open the git log, um, you'll see um, that there's one failed 29 pass. So um, yeah, there's an error going on right here. Apples is not found. Um, so great, so we're seeing everything is being blocked. Um, and let's undo this. And there you go. So now we've got our pre-commit hook configured so that files are automatically linted and files are automatically, and our Python tests written using PyTest are also run and everything is done within this configuration file. And this configuration file is detected by our git hooks pre-commit hook. And this is all run by the pre-commit Python package. I hope this has been super useful. I find this really useful when I'm um, doing coding, um, developing my website. It's really nice to keep the master branch really clean and just never commit anything to master or to, um, I think we call it main these days because master is an outdated term. So we never want to commit to main bad code. And bad code in this case is things that are badly linted, that, that have linting issues, and code that has failing tests. All right. Hope that was helpful and have a great day.